Good evening, everyone. It is great to see you tonight. I am so blessed that I have grown up in a family that has always been a part of a church. And one of the passages of scripture that I have heard so many times is Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. That's a passage of scripture that gives us a promise from the old covenant. Which which is then reinforced to us in the New Testament. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 tells us, For we are God's masterpiece. He has made us brand new in Christ Jesus, so that we can do the good things that he had planned for us long ago. All of my teenage years, I heard these two scriptures again and again. Not only does God have a plan for you, but God has a good plan for you. And because I heard this said so many times, in my heart, I believed it. So I did the obvious thing, and that is, I asked God the question. God, you said you have a good plan for me. So could you please tell me what that good plan is? I have now been full-time pastoring for 20 years. And I think that this question is one of the most, is probably the number one question that people are asking. God, what is your plan for my life? Has anyone here ever asked God this question? Many have asked this question. Tonight, I want to give you what the Bible says that God's plan is for you. A plan that you can begin living the moment you walk out the doors. See, recently I was in a conversation with a mentor and we were talking about God's plan for my life. And my mentor said to me, Lottie, there is a problem. He said, no, let me say that again. He said, Lottie, too many people spend too much time asking God what his plan is for their life. And I said to my mentor, what is the problem with asking this question? Because God does have a good plan for my life. And my mentor said, correct, he does have a good plan. 
But when you are only asking about what his plan is for you, it is a very self-centered question. Got got ban chlai mo kan nhom nao chom lai mui phu a nhom cham chu chom lai mui de con nhe tha. Lo ti bơ san chi yeng kron ta suo po ang tha po ang mien gom rong phai na ka lo o sam rap nhom hai yeng ket ta pi ta suo po ang tha po ang sai ke bo nhom suo sai ke bo nhom sam nuo nang ku chi sam nuo mui dai suo ban chea tai ket ta pi khluon ai. And then he said to me, but to mak ko chlai tha chea. When it comes to God's plan, you will never be in the center. And I have to tell you tonight that that hurt my pride a lot. So I said to my mentor, "Should we not ask God what His plan is?" And he said, "Yes, Lottie, ask God what His plan is." He said, "Don't ask God what His plan is for you. Just ask God what is your plan." And my mentor explained to me that when you know what God's plan is, who b a k y m k o t l a t a c h e Then you can use everything that God has given you to get on board with His plan. No p e r young yol bi kumrong p a n a k a po ang ruko bumnong prah tay po ang nu t o o y n g chap dam che pi c h a r n a n g ka p r a p r a n a w a y n g mien h a s m s r b m u n a n g awai de po ang kwa prah tay t o i n The plan of God for your life is not a tight rope that you have to walk on and be careful of falling. Bom nong p r a h a t i r o p r a m a r u m r o n g p a n k a o p r a m a s m r a p y n g m n m n t a y n g m r o n g k a m u t s m r a p t a y n g m u t a y n g t h m a t r n g l k m t l s o y n g a l t s s p t The plan of God for your life is to use whatever He has given you. กรงพนกาบอปองสำหรับชีวิตบอยเยอะคือสำหรับเอาเยอะเปล่าเปล่าเนาะเอาไว้ได้ปองบันปตีนมาต่อยึง all his gifts โดยจะเปลี่ยนนอยตีนบอปอง all your talents หรือก็อำนาจตีนปองตีนเอาเยอะหรือมวยก็เอ่อเอ่อจุ่มเนียนหรือเต็มก็ซ่าได้ปองตีนเอาเยอะ whatever resources you have ทนเทียนได้ยึงเมียน so that you can build his kingdom นำไปยึงเปล่าเปล่าต่างอ่อนนี่สำหรับก่อสร้างประเทศบอปแปรจิมจ่าวิง When you know God's plan, no p e r young s q u a r come wrong p a n a k a b o p r a Then you know what God's plan is for you. No, t o r young dang t a young t o u cho room chom nai nai na. So now we no longer need to ask God what is your plan for me. A l o w young chap dam t o u c h e s u sum nua kum t o i sua tha po ang mien say sum rap k h m Now we can just ask the question, God, what is your plan? A l o w young sua po ang wen tha po ang po ang come wrong p a n a k a b o p ang ai ke po ang t o u sum rap. Thankfully, God has revealed us His plan right throughout His Word. My favorite passage of Scripture that gives us God's plan in a very simple way is what I want to read to you tonight. At the bottom of the page, the Bible says, "Your young are born young, but by the grace of God." It's found in Micah chapter 6 verse 8. It says, "He has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God." บ่มน้องประหารใจพ่อในบ้านมันเจ็ดนนนอัตบัติกับปีนี้คือใจใจเจ้าเอามนุษย์เอ้ยเก็บบานเปรียบเอ่อเก็บบานเปลี่ยนเปล่าดาวเนี่ยเอาสกอลกาณาได้ละอ้อคือกาณาได้พระอมจ่าสอบประหารเตยเอาเนี่ยทั้งเบอร์คือเนี่ยเต้าพระนับตามยุติทอสโลลันเพียบสมอตรองให้ยกจัดตุกดาดาตามเมียเกียในเปรียบระบอกเนี่ย This simple verse gives us everything that we need to understand God's plan. At the b o t t o p d s a m a n m n i a j o y or young yol p i m r o n g p a n k a p o n g But there's something that you need to know about this scripture. And that is that we don't start at the beginning; we actually start at the end. When 
We don't start with acting justly. We start with walking humbly. To walk humbly with God simply means that you know who He is. It means you know that He's perfect. It means you know that He's holy. It means you know that He is Lord of all. And it also means you know who you are. You know that we are imperfect. You know that we have failed so many times. When we know this, we can walk humbly with who God is. And when you walk humbly with God, you become very aware of the mercy that He has given you. Because when you walk humbly with God, you fall in love with mercy. And the more you know about the mercy that God has given you, your heart becomes filled with a desire for others to experience that mercy also. And that positions us to then act justly for others. To act justly means to make things right. Or another way of describing it is to say to make things as God intends them to be. Once God has made you right, then you live a de- with a desire to make things right. When God makes you as He intends for you to be, then you will live with a desire to make things as He intends them to be. That is His plan for this earth. And there is room for everyone to be involved in outworking this plan. So now maybe you're saying the question, okay, I understand, but what do I actually do? To answer this question, we are going to look at one of my most favorite characters in the whole Bible. There is an Old Testament book named after him. His name is Nehemiah. The book of Nehemiah takes place 500 years before Jesus came to the earth. And it tells the story about a man who rebuilt the broken walls of Jerusalem. But what's important to know about Nehemiah is that he was not a part of the first group that went back to Jerusalem. 
thấu ban kê bờ lên tha ăn nhà tha lâu chôn chết dù đá ai tập lập tao sọc cầm nát bên ban quát mến chưa mà nu cầm đập bóng đại ban kê ăn nhà hai tàu nữa thì he stayed in the nation of Persia because he was cupbearer to the king quát cứ chơi nét đại bầm ra ha tao đo sẽ đại hai quát tao nấu bầm ra sẽ đại nấu nong sọc bè That means that he had a life of luxury. He didn't want to go to Jerusalem. He wanted to stay right where he was. But, but then he heard something. He learnt about something. And it, and it impacted his heart in such a way that he had to move. And I will read the story from Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 2. Hanani, one of my brothers, came to visit me with some other men who had just arrived from Judah. I asked them about the Jews who had returned there from captivity and about how things were going in Jerusalem. They said to me, things are not going well for those who return to the province of Judah. They are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem has been torn down and the gates have been destroyed by fire. When I heard this, I sat down and I wept. In fact, for days I mourned, fasted and prayed to the God of heaven. ពីស្រុកយូដាមកដល់ទីនោះខ្ញុំបានសួរតំណាងពីពួកគាត់ស្ដីអំពីជនជាតិយូដាដែលនៅសេសសល់គឺពួកអ្នកដែលជាប់
one of the students in our youth ministry, his father had just taken his own life by suicide. A 13-year-old boy that would live the rest of his life without his father. That was over 20 years ago, but I can still hear the phone call. I can still feel my heart breaking. And because of what God did in my heart on that day, I have lived the rest of my life Telling young men that he is your heavenly father. That what the enemy has meant for evil, God can use for good. And when we read about the story of Nehemiah, we hear that he has a similar experience. He wants to know how his fellow Jews are going in Jerusalem. But he is told that they are in great trouble and disgrace. When you and I read that scripture, we can just keep reading the story. But what happens for Nehemiah? His heart breaks when he hears these words. He can't even stand up. He falls to his knees. He goes into mourning and fasting and praying. Nehemiah has had a moment where his life will never be the same again. I cannot tell you what God's specific plan for you is. But I can tell you that God has shaped your heart in a certain way. That when you see certain things, that when you hear certain things, that when you learn about certain things, it might just be information for others. But for you, it will break your heart. And the reason why God and the reason why God breaks our hearts is because when we are moved in our heart, we become moved into action. So the question to ask you today, what moves your heart? What have you seen? What have you heard that you say, I cannot be the same again? When you know what breaks your heart, you get an insight into how God wants to use you to build his kingdom. The very next thing that we see happen in this scripture is that Nehemiah, the next thing Nehemiah did is he used what was in his hand 
outwork what God had put in his heart. So often I'm hearing people say, I will be generous when I have more money. I will serve God when I have more time. I'll serve God when I get more gifts. But God wants to use you today by using whatever you have in your hands. Do you remember what God said to Moses when he was calling him? Moses said, I can't do it. I can't do it. And God said to Moses, Moses, just use whatever is in your hands. Moses was holding a shepherd's staff. Do you know that in the story, Moses held that shepherd's staff over the Red Sea and it parted before him? He used that same shepherd's staff to touch the rock and water flowed out. If you are willing to use whatever is currently in your hand, then God will use you to build his kingdom. When God looks from heaven at his church, he's not looking for those that have the most skills. He's not looking for those that have the most talents. He's looking for those whose hearts are most willing to be given to him. Because a heart that is moved creates hands that are moved into action. Two Chronicles chapter 16 verse 9, it says this, The eyes of the Lord search the whole earth, looking to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to Him. You know, what I love the most about the story of Nehemiah is that his story is so different to every other story. When you look at the story of Moses, he has an encounter with God at a burning bush. What an incredible encounter with God to know that He has called you. Gideon, he met with an angel who said, Gideon, you are a mighty man. David, well, he was anointed by the most prominent prophet in all of Israel. Isaiah says, I saw God while I was worshipping in the temple. Both Mary and Joseph personally had an angel visit them and tell them about the future. Paul, the apostle, was knocked off of his donkey and he heard an audible voice from heaven. 
chăng mà lơ quạt vơi quạt thẹn bị lơ non xe hay tự chia quạt lư sầm lên mà bị nó co than xua lơ lư bị lơ mệt mao When we read these stories in the Bible, we can think that if God's going to call me, then I need to experience something like this. I need to see a burning bush. I need to hear a voice from heaven. I need an angel to visit me. But then when we read about Nehemiah, there is no angel. There is no voice from heaven. There is no burning bush. There is nothing extravagant. All there is is a heart that is willing to be moved. And a heart that is willing to be moved creates hands that are moved into action. You do not need a miraculous encounter to know that God has a plan for you. All you need is a heart that is willing. A heart that says, God, you can have my life today. I might only be a student. I don't have much to offer. But if you can use anyone, you can use me. You can take whatever small thing I have in my hand. And you can use it to build your kingdom. You know, tonight I can see that there are many young people in this building. And it is such a great time as a young person to understand how much God wants to use your life to build his kingdom. Tonight I want you to know that you do not have to wait for that moment. God is ready to use you today. God is excited about using your life today. All he's looking for is a heart that is willing to be handed to him. So tonight, I would love to pray for those who are, who are ready to say, Yes, Lord, my life is given to you. You might be saying, I have such a small thing to offer. But God, I am offering it to you. If that's you, then in a moment we are going to ask people to stand and I'm going to ask you to come to the front. And the team of leaders that are at team of leaders here tonight, myself included, are going to pray for your life. We are going to pray that God would lead you and guide you on the next step. And you would experience His power at work in you. As you serve Him. The second group of people that I would love to pray with tonight are those that maybe don't yet know Jesus. How can you give everything in your hand to follow him? 
if you haven't yet given your heart to follow him tonight i would love to pray with you as well as you say jesus i am giving you my heart the Bible says that he is knocking on the door, ready to enter each one of our lives. But he will not kick the door in. It is up to you to willingly choose to open the door and invite him. And in doing so, you make Jesus the Lord of your life. And I would love to pray for both of those groups of people here tonight. So right now, I'm going to ask everyone, uh, if this is you, for those two groups, uh, you are coming to give your life uh, to, 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 to give your life to Jesus, and you are coming to give your hands to Jesus, then when everyone stands, please come and join me down here. <laughs> Jesus, I thank you for every single person that has responded here tonight. For those who have come to give their hearts to you. And those who have come to give their hands to you. I pray that you would speak to every single one of them right now. That you would confirm in their hearts that they are your sons and your daughters. And that you have a plan and a purpose for their life. It's a good plan and a good purpose. One that comes with a future and a hope. I ask tonight that you would touch each one of them with the power of your Holy Spirit so that after tonight they will never be the same again. That their hearts would be broken for you. And their hearts would be broken for the world that is in front of them. And that they would use everything that you've given them to build your kingdom on this earth. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. គឺព្រះនាមព្រះយេស៊ូគ្រីស្ទអាមែនហើយខ្ញុំសង្ឃឹមថាព្រះបន្ទូលនៅថ្ងៃនេះពិតជាលើកទៅចិត្តនឹង